Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So I wanted to do a quick video on how our childhood affects our adult relationships. And I wanted to do this video because I feel like a lot of people don't understand or they underestimate how much their upbringing or their childhood environment affects the way they interact within their relationships. And I don't just mean romantic relationships. It could be friendships. It could be the way you interact with your parents, the way you interact with your children or your coworkers. Just the way you interact with people in general has a lot to do with your upbringing. So I wanted to give just a couple different, I guess, scenarios or situations in childhood that could lead people to act certain ways into adulthood. So let's get into it. Okay, so first off is the people pleaser. You know the phrase, stop setting yourself on fire to keep other people warm? Basically, that phrase is referring to a person who is a people pleaser. So if you are a people pleaser, that means that you are continuously putting other people's feelings before your own. You continuously give to people to make them happy, but a lot of the time you're not getting any of that in return. So all of your emotions, all of your wants and needs are completely thrown to the side and you're catering to other people to make them happy. Now in childhood, this could stem from having abusive parents, um, parents who have a short fuse or a short temper, or even parents who are just really busy and just sometimes ignore you a lot. So what will happen in that situation is children will tend to overcompensate by trying to make them, their parents happy in order to feel loved or in order to feel safe. And that basically wires the child to feel like their own emotions are not as important. And all of this is done subconsciously. This is not something that's conscious, obviously, because you're a child. So basically it's implanted in your subconscious mind that you need to make other people happy in order to feel safe, in order to feel loved, in order to be accepted. And if you stop pleasing other people, then they will reject you and leave you. So that's where people pleasing tends to come from. Next up is the child who experienced excessive punishment. Now, if as a child you were punished for every little thing that you did and you had to constantly walk on eggshells around your household, um, this could lead to in adulthood feeling like you have to punish your spouse or your friends or whoever you're interacting with for every little thing that they do. Like every minor mistake that they make, you feel like you have to either cut them off or you feel like you have to ignore them or give them silent treatment. And basically these are the people who have a hard time practicing forgiveness because every time somebody does something to them, they feel like it's worthy of punishment. Basically, they have internalized what happened to them as children, where every little thing they did, they were punished for. And if there was no punishment, that means that there could be no forgiveness. The downside to this is that these type of people also tend to be very hard on themselves. So the same way they punish other people for doing the most minor things, whenever they make the smallest mistakes, they actually punish themselves. And they'll be basically have a lot of negative self-talk, always putting themselves down in their head. And also these are the people who have a hard time forgiving themselves. So that is the child who experienced excessive punishment. Next up is the poor communicator. I am guilty. <laughs> I'm guilty of this myself. Um, definitely it's something that I see within myself. Um, basically with the poor communicator, it's a person who basically they expect you to be a mind reader. So when they're pissed off, at their partner or their spouse they expect their spouse to know exactly what they're thinking um and it's kind of like okay i'm mad and you should know why i'm mad i shouldn't have to explain to you why i'm mad and then the partner has no clue what's going on so then in turn that makes you more mad i know i can't be the only one i see this all the time so basically poor communication skills can come from a number of places but mostly if in childhood you try to express yourself or you try to display your emotions um, in any way, whether that's verbally displaying them or you cried or anything along that, those lines and your parents would tell you to be quiet, shut up, stop crying, or if every time you went to your parents to express yourself, they pretty much invalidated you and sent you along your way, then that can cause you to have poor communication skills in adulthood. For example, when I was a child, I was the type of kid that would continuously call family meetings like if i was upset about something i wanted everybody to understand like listen i'm upset like let's talk about this but as i got older i started to understand that i i mean as i got older i started to see that our family meetings always ended up in 
chaos. They always ended up in somebody screaming or people getting upset. And they always ended up with my parents um, not really changing their behavior. And I didn't realize that later on in life, subconsciously, that taught me that when I express myself, to expect to be invalidated. So then I, in turn, I stopped expressing myself. So I was dating this guy at one point that he was very much like, listen, you need to be up for an honest, like we need to have good communication skills. And whenever I had a problem with him, I would either not speak up on it or I would beat around the bush before I got to my point. And I didn't even notice I was doing it until he pointed it out. And that's when I realized that, yeah, my communication skills come from the fear of being invalidated. I'd rather just not even express myself at all. Or I'd rather just write a letter because when you're writing a letter and you give it to them or you're texting them, you are not really there to see their reaction. So then that fear of invalidation pretty much goes away. I hope that makes sense. So basically, if you are a poor communicator, it could stem from the fact that in childhood you were invalidated a lot and now you have that internal fear of, of invalidation so you don't even want to express yourself or your needs. So you keep them to yourself. Next up is the child with abandonment issues or the person who had abandonment issues from childhood. So this one's pretty straightforward. If you had a parent who completely left you or um, a parent who was not present and they made promises to come see you and they never actually did, you could have internalized abandonment issues as a child. Now, in adulthood, that could lead you to interact in relationships in a couple different ways. Um, some people with abandonment issues, they don't even want a relationship at all. Like they have very severe trust issues and they just want to stay away from people in general. They don't want to be romantically involved. They don't want to, um, form close bonds or close friendships at all. And then there are the people with abandonment issues who dive too deep into the relationship and they basically center their happiness around their relationship and they have a deep embedded fear that their partner is going to leave and so these are the people who tend to stay in abusive relationships or relationships that just aren't good for them longer than the average person um basically they have a fear of disconnecting from their partners the same way they may have disconnected from their parents as children so that's the people with abandonment issues now, this one's a little bit more heavy. Um, well, they're all heavy, but the child who experienced uh, sexual abuse. Now, children who experience sexual abuse basically grow up to feel like their worth is in direct correlation with sex. So they feel like they have to have sex with people in order for people to love them or accept them. And these are the people who often are... Um, promiscuous and not to say that everybody who's promiscuous has gone through this because there are some people who are emotionally healthy stable human beings who they just enjoy having sex with multiple people but I'm specifically talking about the people who in childhood were violated sexually and now they see themselves as a sex object subconsciously this is not nothing that's conscious and these are the people who will may have sex with people who are extremely disrespectful or they'll just give their body to anybody because they're looking for that love and that acceptance and they feel like they can only get it through sexual experiences so okay next up is the child who has been gaslighted now if you don't know what gaslighting is um it comes from a movie um basically it was a movie where i'll leave it down below but um basically it's a movie where a husband would keep on moving things in his household so that his wife could think she's going crazy so she'll put like her hairbrush one place and then leave the room and he'll take it and move it to the other end of the room and she'll come in like where's my hairbrush and she'll swear that she put it down one place and it'll be across the room and so that caused her to almost go slowly insane which people you would never think that that would cause somebody to lose their mind but it actually does um basically you're invalidating their reality in childhood what this looks like is when, okay, let's say for example, parents are arguing, they get into a big fight, they're fighting and the child is standing there crying or the child can hear it from their bedroom. And then the next morning, the child approaches one of the parents like, what happened? I heard screaming and the parents are like, you didn't hear anything. Nothing's wrong, everything's fine. And subconsciously that can make a child question their own reality and it could make them very uns unsure of themselves. So what this looks like in adulthood is the people who just can't are very indecisive when it comes to relationships and they can't make sound decisions because they don't trust themselves so they'll continuously maybe choose the wrong partner and then 
it's like their intuition is telling them stay away but because they don't trust themselves they go forward anyway and then when they're in relationships their partners can easily deceive them so let's say and this is and honestly this has happened to me before let's say like your spouse's phone rings right or it goes off and you see a text message pop up and you clearly can see the name of the per like i said i i <laughs> this has happened to me before you can clearly see the name of the person and you can clearly see like the text message you know you can see like a little snippet of the text on the screen and you're like well who's that like i just saw so and so text you this and this and they're like you didn't see that no that didn't happen like like i said i've experienced this before and you're sitting there like like no i know i just saw what i saw and they're just like no and people who have been gaslit as children, it's easier for them to fall into that trap. Like, you'll really be like, okay, no, maybe I didn't see what I saw. Um, so, yeah, these are the people who are extremely indecisive in relationships. And they can be easily manipulated in relationships because they're constantly questioning themselves and they don't trust their own intuition. Now, the attention seeker is basically the child who constantly felt like they had to be bad or display bad behavior in order to get their parents' attention. That could come from their parents being extremely busy or just maybe they had a lot of siblings and they just didn't get the attention that they desired. So they felt like they had to act up in school or act up outside in order for their, their parents to pay attention to them. Like the only attention they were getting is when they got a phone call from the school and the parents had to come in and sit in a meeting and um, subconsciously they feel like I have to act up in order for my parents to pay me any type of attention. So in adulthood, what that looks like is a person who continuously starts drama for no reason in their relationships. And I'm sure we've all seen this happen. All right, sorry guys, my camera just died. So if the angle or lighting is a little bit different, that's why. But um, yeah, so these are the people who, like I said, they thrive off of drama in their relationship. They will stir up unnecessary drama because in childhood, they're used to only getting attention from negative behavior so yeah also i have a theory that these people tend to grow up to be um the trolls that you see on the internet now i could be wrong because i didn't the rest of this is research this is just kind of my own theory but i mean it makes sense in my head that people who thrive on negative behavior on the internet or the people who say outlandish things on the internet just to get retweets or just so people could pay attention to them that maybe in childhood they only could get attention from negative behavior like i said I could be wrong. I don't know. It makes sense in my head. I might do a part two to this just because there are a couple other personality types or a couple other scenarios that I want to run down, but um, I don't want to make this video too long. So I might do a part two to this, but yeah, I hope that this was helpful. I hope that if you can identify with anything in this video, that, that means that you can maybe change your behavior or... Um, change your subconscious beliefs or your subconscious thoughts from childhood and then that in turn can make your adult relationships much more healthy more stable and more happy so like i said i hope this was helpful please subscribe down below if you had not i am challenging myself to upload as much as possible in the month of january and i will see you guys in the next one